is online. Mm. Hey, look at that. You get the microphones we'll up, see. right? Good evening. Welcome to the April 1st, 2014 meeting of the Planning Board. Uh, Called me into order with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We do a roll call of members. Uh, Mike Caparillo, present. Tom Young, Vice Chair. Russell Blanchett, member, present. Kevin Bullock, present. Absent today is Bob Curtis, Joel Kappelson, and Mike Cretu. We have any public input this evening? Here and seeing none, we'll move on to the first item, which would be the work session for impact fee ordinance draft. So I'm going to pull that up. I think with Jen's guidance, we're going to tackle it in pieces today. And these comments in here, are these mostly you? Are these Mr. Mayberry? Are these all Mr. Mayberry? Uh, a little bit of everything. OK. So what you have, to kind of rewind to two years ago, we had made a first pass effort at taking the public capital facilities impact fee ordinance and the school impact fee ordinance and merging them together to be one single uh, ordinance because a lot of the language was redundant, duplicative, and it was not necessary to have two separate ordinances. Um, so that's the first batch of, of edits that are here. The second batch of edits are the board's review from two years ago after we did that mer that attempt at merging okay. the two documents. So you still have some comments from that point in time that are just kind of some notes in the margin. Now, on top of that, I've added and marked this draft up based on the comments that Mr. Mayberry had sent in a separate memo. Um, he had typed up some comments and suggestions that he had for the draft. So rather than try and go between two separate documents, I've tried to merge his comments in here, which is why it started to get really frightful looking. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, um, Jason Hoke went through Mr. Mayberry's comments and added some comments as well. So I've merged those in here um, as well. So those suggestions that they had that were very very straightforward um, suggestions i've gone through and just made some quick edits but otherwise by and large where they're suggesting a larger more conceptual change i've just included it in the margins um, so that the board can go through and think about how they want to address some of these different suggestions um, this is dense there's a lot um, and since it's been two years i would recommend just starting at the top and working through um, all of the either the edits or the um, comments lastly i'd actually want want to start by jumping towards the end just a quick question when you have paragraphs that are all pink but no comment areas are those paragraphs that were just merged from the other document like if you go 1300.03C, is that because it was from the school side and you merged it together? Or is, um, is that not how it's looking now? No, actually, actually uh, all of 1300.03, yep. it's one really large comment. OK. So anything that is commented on is in pink, or mm -hmm. anything that's commented on is in pink or yes. salmon or whatever that is? Yes. OK. Um, So you know, I wanted to jump to one of Mr. Mayberry's comments that I just pasted in at the end as opposed to as a word bubble, and it's at, on page 10. And so this was just something that's good to have 
in the back of your mind as we talk about this or even to discuss before we get into the nitty gritty. Um, and after going through and providing comments on the whole ordinance, Mr. Mayberry suggested essentially scrapping, reorganizing, and rewriting. So the approach that you, that you would take to, to get to this reorganized proposal would be to um, repeal and replace uh, in whole. It would be a cleaner approach. If, you, if we get to the point where we're looking at this and every other word is an edit, it may be easier to simply repeal and replace because it's gonna be confusing enough for us to look at and read it um, as track changed or the edit form, the you know underline and strike throughs. Uh, somebody that you're presenting this to at town meeting is gonna look at that and their eyes are gonna cross. Um, so, so that's just one thing, uh, one consideration to keep in mind. We can keep working and track changes for now um, so that you know what we currently have versus what's changing. But if we start going to this recommendation that he has of a reorganized, essentially outline for, for this ordinance, you're gonna see entire sections picked up and moved. And in that case, it's... But the repeal and replace, you'd still have to have public hearings for both sides and it still yes. goes to the ballot. And if one passes but not the other, then what is it contingent on? You would do repeal and replace as one single warrant. As one item. Okay. So yeah. otherwise it stays separate as two items, school and town, or we, if, if you vote no, it stays the way it is now. Right. And all the changes we've done are not reflected in the two-way version because we're not touching that. Right. So all the work is for nothing. Either way, it'd be so, one warrant article yeah. because you'd have to merge, you'd have the one article that would, that would say, make all of these edits to um, 1300 and repeal 1400. Okay. So it wouldn't make sense to make the edits the way we have it without repealing the schools piece yep. anyways. So otherwise then you'd have two conflicting ordinance. So it'd be a cleaner presentation to the voter if we had a repeal and replace, because it's just it's not. It might arrows be. everywhere. It might be. Or the content's the same content. Yes. It's just presented differently. It's just okay. saying we're just going to scrap what we have, adopt a whole fresh new. Yep. Um, it, and that would really be like I think where we're at right now. If you kept the same organizational structure that you have right now. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to go the repeal and replace route if it's if you start that reorganization and change you know and take this piece and this piece and move them over here and but aren't we doing that by combining both into one no because they they're 1300 1400 so they're almost identical so there's in one ordinance as opposed to two separate places but the content 1300 is one group, 1,400 is the other group. Yeah, and okay. essentially the only difference between 1,300 and 1,400, the way they currently exist, is you've got identical text between the two, and 1,300 says public capital facilities, and 1,400 says school facilities, okay. um, and that's it. Um, and Mr. Mayberry suggests that we go this direction in terms of an ordinance that's easier to follow and all in one spot. Yes, because... Um, Part of the point that he makes and that he's tried to include as he went through and, and provided his comments was that Litchfield's ordinance, like several other communities in the state, was adopted um, prior to what we currently now have in statute. And so there was a lot of justification, purpose, um, statements, findings, um, and other really foundational items included in the ordinance because the statutory language wasn't there. Okay. Um, so now what he's saying is is what is here is obsolete and unnecessary because now you have those statu statutory provisions that provide that direction to the municipality that you didn't have previously. So we're covered in other areas, so it doesn't have to be duplicated here. Right. Okay. Um, and, the, and the main thing that he suggests that has now become obsolete is a lot of the findings. Just because 
The findings are um, very much so that, so this is like we're starting in here on page one, are very much so something that is applicable at the time that they're drafted. Mm -hmm. And um, they are certainly not as applicable today as they were when they were originally drafted, just given a lot of uh, economic and, and other changes that have happened. So th that's one piece where he says, by and large, you can do away with. Another thing that he suggests, just as a simp simplification and a clarification, is you now have in statute clear definition um, of, of what your capital facilities are or what public capital facilities are. And so he suggests don't, don't distinguish even between public capital and school facilities. School facilities are included as part of your public capital facilities by definition. Um, and so that's another just terminology change that he's just making throughout just to simplify and be more consistent. So, so this is some of the kind of like big overarching mm -hmm. elements. So should we hit it by paragraph? Is that the most practical way? I suppose Are so. You, we all ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Go. Oh, <laughs> well, we just hit 01 first. I mean, that's pretty, authority's pretty straightforward because that's a legal term. So there's probably not much we need to adjust there, I would no. think. Um, or is there? No, the only thing I would say, mention, though, is just that um, anything that's in red text is either new or deleted. Um, okay. I think this revision, I did these a couple weeks ago, so I'm just adding Mr. Mayberry's in. Um, this uh, added sentence to the authority section mm -hmm. is coming from um, suggestion from Mr. Mayberry just to kind of make it broader, um, because then later he reduces some of your language elsewhere. Um, so this is more just a it also starts your authority it statement. Defining that it's both the town and the school. Exactly. So you define it from the beginning, so I don't see why that's a bad thing. Exactly. Unless anyone does. No, I have no problem with this. Okay. Oh, two. Almost done. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if so. Why would you take out be consistent with the, the master plan? Because um, isn't that what the whole town's supposed to follow? Yes. Again, this was a Mr. Mayberry suggestion. Right. Um, I think what he was he was looking to do is render things generic enough so that if you ever update your master plan prior to making amendments to any ordinances, you're not, not stuck in a, in a limbo situation where uh, you no longer match directly. Um, that said, he's saying to, you really want to put the focus on that it's the intent of the impact fee is really to implement the master plan. Uh, and so that's more where the focus is. So it's inferred if you implement the master plan, you're being consistent with it because you're implementing it. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes your master plan won't be as detailed as what you would need for um, what you would be programming impact fees for. Um, right. It's going to be a little bit more generic. And CIP helps fill in the, the missing parts of that. Again, with the focus on implementing those. That said, you certainly can leave the consistent with in there if you. I just personally, I just wanted to make sure, that, and if it's implemented, it's consistent with it because you can't implement it without following it. So it is like an extra word, I guess. Yeah. So as long as legally I'm not looking the right way, but. We can keep it. I don't need to. No, I think we did fine. Yeah. 
and he added including public school facilities and C just I know we just said a school is a public facility so is that just to be overly not cautious but specific that includes school also in one document um yeah and let me because it is all public I mean right. a different town doesn't own our schools we do so that's redundant unless it's this clarification that you're better off, right better off having it I just want to pull up the old version that way I can have handy and know what we what was previously changed versus changed as a suggestion here And just while you're looking that up, quick question from two years ago. What was, yeah. nothing was, I wasn't here two years ago, so nothing was changed, obviously, right? So we looked, it was looked at, but not, it was tabled, or? It wasn't even tabled. No. It didn't even go to hearing. It was a first draft was worked on, and then we said, well, once Mr. Mayberry has some time to start working on his methodologies, then we'll revisit this. And that's why last year we had the money set aside to have him do his assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was a step two of... Mm -hmm. And this is step three, combining it all together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, including public school facilities, was something that um, two years ago we added so that um, it could go either way at this point. I mean, you could include it up front in this first section just for the sake of clarifying and making sure that it's yeah. obvious. Um, and then uh, I think it's one of the things that, that he suggests that – it could, would, could be a change that's carried through throughout to yep. not then specify or single out the public schools piece. Um, so. Okay. Well, yeah, because you're saying they're waiting for us one anyway. Right. Yep. There's so I mean, no ambiguity. It's defined. You can go either way there. Yep. I would just keep it. <clears throat> All right, 3 a that's just carrying on with the same, the same gist of it, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it also falls under findings, which we may decide to uh, get rid of entirely. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayberry suggests getting rid of the findings of the whole uh, 1300.03. Yeah, predates statutory language. Come on. No. So what's... I got to pull up the electronic version here because my printed copy doesn't show my little lines connecting my comment bubbles to the text. Okay. Um, leave so um, comment one goes to 1300 um, 03 a through e and so uh, mr. May Mayberry suggested deleting altogether a through e and then again legally were covered in ordinances outside of <clears throat> outside of the impact fees state statute would uh, so, so, so not our town but the state overall covers us in right a so. right so the statutes i think i put on the um did i put a link on the site may not have it might have been a out of that, I think I may have the link just embedded in one of the comments somewhere. I do. If you want the, um, that's vested. Ooh. I didn't include a hyperlink directly to the impact fee statute. If you want them, I can get you all there so you can see what. 
I mean, so A through E are, are specifically mentioned or the context of what they cover is mentioned? Yeah, so if you look at B, yep. I mean, that one's directly referring to um, the statutory provisions. Yep. Uh, but bottom line is what what's now there in statute and has been for a while now uh, are those guidelines for what an impact fee is appropriate to be used for and how they're to be used. Um, and you know, a lot of this is, it has been codified in statute now. If someone challenges a statute, the statute protects what we have in here because it's a state law. You, you know what I'm saying? There's a court challenge for right. impact fees. Right. So um, New Hampshire being a Dillon's rule state means that a municipality can only do what it's allowed under statute. Okay. So the statute prov provides that framework. In some instances, the statute will say that a municipality may adopt more restrictive requirements. And in this case, it just mimics the statute in terms of what we'd be deleting. So we're covering ourselves from the statute perspective. Right, and okay. essentially the findings, these yeah. were the justification that the town used to adopt an impact fee ordinance Orig in originally. the first place. Yep. So these weren't necessarily applicable to the applicant. They were saying, listen, we as the town of Litchfield have the right to adopt an impact fee ordinance and here is why. Um, so this was the town protecting itself um, and, and setting its own justification. And now that the state statute has all that spelled out yep it's redundant to have it in our ordinance i'm fine taking a through e right i agree okay and then f through h um he suggests moving just so the whole findings category can be deleted and they yeah so the ca exactly findings would not be a category um and these items that um F, G, and H would become 1309. 1309, and it'd be, um, oh, he had another in his memo title for this um, related to the impact, the administration of the impact fees. So. Review and establishment of fees here. So in this document, it's not moved to a new section. So are we better off addressing those letters individually and then deciding to move them <coughs> and then create a new section and then just prove it after? OK. Yeah. All right. Do so you want us to go to F? <laughs> You wrote as revised for the comment two. Yes. So it, what's that? Ref That's going to the um, the fees established by the impact fee schedule, as revised. It was one. Of, it was uh, recommended to say to keep things generic, so that each time you revise the impact fee methodologies, you're not caught in a pickle. So one of the things again that Mr. Mayberry pointed out in his review is that you have each of your impact fee methodology schedules cited in in your regulation or in your ordinance so administratively that means each time you complete and update your schedule uh, or your your not the schedule necessarily but the the methodology for calculating and setting the schedule you can't use it until you send it to the voters to amend the ordinance. All right. Um, what he suggests is essentially what you already do, but then you wait and you insert it into ordinance. I, I don't know if you're waiting until you're, you're putting it in the ordinance, um, but you have the ability to work with Mr. Mayberry, come up with a new methodology, 
hold a hearing and adopt that new methodology. Um, Without a ballot? <coughs> as long as the ordinance says as revised. as revised or as amended. So how, as it's written today, does it say that as it's written today? So as it's written today, that's in 1309. I assume it would be because that's what we do, right? The review and establishment of fees. <clears throat> so the first paragraph of thirteen oh nine of thirteen oh nine sets out the process by which you're to come up with the methodologies. Okay. Nope, that makes sense. So so what he's simply saying is just not to reference all the specific individual ones. So it's just an administrative headache to yep. make, make consistent. housekeeping yep. edits to your ordinance. So we're okay keeping as or adding as revised in? Yeah. Okay. I think that's wise. And then basically one and two under F are just basically reiterating that the schools are combined with the town right and we um i think where you say the town of um for like under two compensating the town of litchfield and the litchfield school district mm -hmm. i think you do in that, those situations need to um, specify that it's the town and the school district uh, but in terms of the type of facilities um here we've got public and educational capital facilities i would not um I would actually not include the educational since uh, the the definition is proposed to be revised. Now, um, I'm sorry, are you on two still, or are you beyond two? One. Oh, you're on one. One yeah. and two. Okay. So I'm looking at the definitions. Hold on. Oh my goodness, the lines aren't here. It's gonna make me nuts. All right, so I just wanted to refresh my memory there on the, the notes on the, the definition. So uh, jumping ahead, because yep. <coughs> this is one of those recommendations that kind of carries throughout the whole thing. Um, Mr. Mayberry had suggested just calling them public capital facilities. Don't say public and educational capital facilities. Don't, you know, don't do public capital facilities and school facilities was saying it's not necessary by simply revising the definition of public capital facilities to include the school district then you're incorporating both pieces and then um, he recommended not pulling forward the definition for school facilities which was in the school facilities impact fee ordinance that we lifted from there and dropped in here um, so that was one of the recommendations he had just to simplify and remove words. So. Generally, how do you want to, it, that's a terminolo terminology choice. I mean, it's right there in F1 and in F2. Um, it would carry through the entire ordinance. We can kind of tackle that terminology change here on page one and then I'll just carry it throughout and we won't discuss it further. Yeah. How you want to just but the only change you made was adding it what was the right under alliance right adding and ed educational and electrical yeah. school district and educational yeah so it's just defining it one step deeper which right so based on your the proposed revisions to the definition yeah. a public capital facility would include schools um, so yeah. you wouldn't need to include the additional and educational you can but you wouldn't need to 
But someone would have to go to the definitions to understand that as opposed to reading the ordinance. Well, part of that, though, is why up front we and authority, yep. we said it's town and school. Okay. So, I mean, it's, if you're going to read it, you're going to read it from the beginning. Right? So it's just extra verbiage just in there. And did Mr. Mayberry add that in, or is that... What's who did that's from two years ago? Yeah. That's okay. our that's zippering our of ordinances. And his comment is we don't need it because yeah. we have it in the definitions. Okay, that's when we were trying to combine the two together. Yep, and, and we weren't sure what we had to do, okay. and we were being very literal. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm fine striking it if we reference it in the beginning okay. of the document. So then you go through the whole document, you know it's defined that way. Okay, anyway. yep. yep. Question G, do you have for perpetuity, like forever, have to reference every year? Is that just a legal reason we do that, or is that something? No, so that was one of the things that just overall he. I don't think I want to remember Ken and Associates. You don't necessarily in need to spell them out every time, okay. each time you update. Well, we're still using the Ken and Associates December 1990 uh, impact fee schedule, which is why we have Mayberry on. Right. Uh, to revise okay. because th that that whole thing is just so obsolete now we, we keep just applying a cost escalator to it well, I guess the the bigger issue or question is do we keep referring backwards or we just put the most recent one in there um, we should reference everything that we're actively using uh, once Mayberry's report has been um, adopted by this board we can get rid of Canon the reference to the Canon report is that right Jim Yes, um, or so keep in mind that this piece would move to section 1309. Um, and so the first part of 1309 sets the methodology for how you come up with these reports. Um, so perhaps you do it as, you know, so that reports developed in accordance with paragraph A above, um, and then you just don't worry about having to amend your ordinance each time a new re a report is adopted is another is that just referenced in one area i think so i thought it was but it so, might be referenced again in 1309 in the sub paragraphs so is that why he added on g or as amended no that was a board suggestion from a while ago I haven't or as amended does that just not give it as uh, does it not give it the yes yeah it's squishy right yes okay so we probably should not have that because these reflect very specific documents that are accept mm -hmm. accepted by the planning board right or those by the voter that's the planning board. Like Mayberry's. Right, so the or as amended covers you in that interim gap so that say, you know, in July you finished up and um, developed a new methodology or an updated methodology and adopted it. Um, by having or as amended there, then you're acknowledging that there may be amended or updated versions okay. that you may, you know, town meeting may not have come around yet to be able to incorporate it into the ordinance. So you would recommend to keep that in? Just to cover in that case? Okay. So are we keeping this in this one spot or are we moving it? You mentioned 1309. We yes. could reference up to this spot? Yes, yeah, so put off pacing FG it? and H would relocate to 1309 
So if you see comment three in the margin, mm -hmm. this is coming from, this is summarizing from Mr. Mayberry um, and his just general recommendation to not list the reports by title. What would we list if not by specific title? So. <laughs> <laughs> that report. <laughs> right, but so here's the thing. Thinking about it further, by saying or as amended, you're saying that one of these specific reports has been amended, but it doesn't acknowledge a new methodology that you would adopt. So what he's saying is by listing them by specific title in the ordinance means if that's the way you're acknowledging that report's formal existence as the applicable authority and methodology to be set, then you gotta wait until town meeting for that methodology to become effective and, and be utilized. Uh, what if you say instead of or as amended, say or as created or amended? Then doesn't let you add something else in? Am I breaking the law by doing that? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> your face said something too. I don't too. know. Eye contact. Um, <laughs> I would go with Mr. Mayberry that you don't yeah. need to list them out that you don't okay. need to have the specific titles. So by not listing them out, that you get more flexibility because you're not referring them directly? Right. And okay. the, it is then, though, incumbent on the town to make sure that those reports are made easily available so that any applicant would know that they exist. And do we do that now? Um, I don't know if they're on the website or not. Um, so we can maybe put a note just to ourselves? Yes. That if we delete it from here, that we add it somewhere else. That's yeah, then it would definitely need to go on the or on the town's website. Um, I think if you, um, I gave you some links from the city of Lebanon. Yep. So they have their basis of assessment, fee schedules, and other documents, all happily and easily accessible on one page, so that. If you go to their their ordinances page, like you guys have an ordinance page and click impact fee, it brings up this whole page and it gives you all of these documents that pertain to their impact fee. Okay. Um, and they ha they also have worked with Mr. Mayberry, so some of their um, materials will look very familiar to you. Okay. Um, so there they have, they just call it basis of assessment and that is their methodology um, document. Now, who adjustments to the website are those done by? Do is that uh, you? No, it's not me. No, uh, John Brunel. Uh, okay. John gets it. them. Does that have to go through the selectmen to do this, or can we just say we just want to reorganize a certain way? Joan just usually uh, gives to down. to John her updates that she has. Okay. She has one. Piece. So what it would be is it just be one? Yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a great section of bullets yeah. on it's our your document. existing we own page. It. We, if you're clicking on impact fees, you should, as an ordinance, you should have everything in one spot that you need to make a decision or to be educated on it. Cool. So, yeah. So that's nothing. That's only if we adopt all this, or is that something we should change now just to make it more functional for the? I'd say they should public. go there now. I agree. With you. Um. And then, if you have that good practice of making sure that those individual documents are there and available yep. and obvious, um, then there's little benefit to spelling them out individually in the ordinance itself. Could you email um, Joan the exact ones that we want together just to make it consistent with what Lebanon does or what we're gonna be yep. doing? Okay. Because I feel better if it's there now, so if we adjust this, then we don't forget to have it all put together in one spot. Yep. Now, Lebanon was the one that had dual combined to one, right? And they've already combined into one. So they've been through this already. They've already been through this. But they had similar, because of Mayberry, town and school separate, and then... Yes, okay. and in fact, they had very similar to what you currently have, because I think it was the same consultant who drafted their two separate ordinances as drafted. Your right. two separate okay. ordinances. Paste and copy? 
Huh? Yeah. It's already done, right? Yeah. Um, so, I, I do think... Bill. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could. You could go grab Lebanon and, and change City of Lebanon with the town of Litchfield and be done with it. <laughs> um, but I think that over the years, each town has added their own yep. personality yeah. to the ordinances. So, I don't know that the... I think there are... You have each... Each has different procedural ways of of operating, and so doing that, you yeah. it would. I think the you content try to superimpose yeah. a procedure that isn't yours. I think the content is your content, but I think yes. the layout and functionality of how they do in their website, you know, if it works for them because it's all in one spot and it hasn't been challenged of work, where is it? Then I don't see why we can't adopt the same structure. Yeah. Obviously, the details inside need to be our own, but. I, I'm always a firm believer when you click something and you don't see what you think should be related to what you're looking at, it's annoying I agree. that yep. you have to go back out, go back in, do a I search agree. of the website to try mm -hmm. to find it. So, Okay, so we're moving F, G, and H to 1309. Yeah. Okay. And H we're keeping as is. I don't see anything that needs to be changed in H. So are we going generic in G? And not mention it. the specific ones. Yeah, I say yes if we have it referenced on our website. But what do you? Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me first get what we currently have to be posted on the website, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So then it's there. Okay. Okay, so moving on to 04. Mr. Mayberry is saying to keep it generic, meaning to strike, being that specific regarding fire, police, safety facilities, in his JC4. Um, is that where he's saying to keep it generic, or is he saying somewhere else? Hold on. Okay, so yeah, the comment four. Yep. All right, that goes to um, 1300.04B. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so the B language in B is language that we had come up with two years ago when we were working on this. Um, and what he's saying um, is that there is you know, the definition of impact fees in statute is very specific as to what you can collect an impact fee for. Yep. It's also though, it also includes many things that you don't currently collect impact fees for. Um, so his suggestion is, again, just keep the ordinance focused on the administrative and functional side of how the impact fee system works, and then use your methodology as your methodology piece that you create as that, that add-on component to do an assessment of whether impact fees are applicable or useful for any of those um, types of facilities. Yep. And so you may say that, okay, right now, yes, it is important that we, in, in, you know, we do have some, some need that we see in the fire and police um, domains, but roads, not so much. I'm making things up here. Um, that would then that would allow you to, through your methodology, defend um, and justify the need for collecting impact fees for a specific facility type, and it would allow you to update that on a more flexible basis. Um, and as opposed to like right now, you're collecting impact fees that you're debating whether you even should be collecting impact fees on. Um, and so 
his his point is leave your language um, outside of the definition as just public capital facilities um, and then use your the definition what I added in, in response was um, per Mr. Mayberry's suggestion in the definition section the definition of what an impact fee is verbatim and in that definition it spells out those types of facilities they may be used for. <coughs> So pre procedural question, if, if we adopt this eventually, this goes to the ballot and it, it's put in place and say they don't collect school impact fees for the elementary school because enrollment's down. Mm -hmm. If we then, with enrollment going up in the future, want to collect impact fees, does that go to the voter again? Or when this baseline's in place, is it the planning board that decides to turn them on? It's then you go through that whole methodology. You've got to do the justification and you have to adopt the methodology. But is that done by public hearing only and not a ballot initiative or is that public hearing okay because so this is the baseline that in the future we could adjust it if you want to turn something on in the future as long as we could justify why we're doing it right and so what you're doing here is you're setting out a policy and you're saying to the voters um, here are the things that we may collect impact fees for um, however the planning board will go through and do this evaluation of whether there is a need to collect yep. those those impact fees before doing okay. so so that's by making it more generic and B, you're not limited to yourself in case there's some impact fee for something not mentioned the way it's written currently, which I don't think there would be, but you never know. Right. So why and not make it more encompassing? Exactly. And that's part of the reason why you want to um, pull that statutory definition in because then it's you're putting it out to the voters to say, do you give us the planning board permission to evaluate all of these different facility needs in the community and determine whether an impact fee is needed to um, help offset the costs of new development okay so basically what you're saying is the, the definition b gets replaced with the definition the statutory definition of an impact fee right and that's that's all b then or or this yeah. little paragraph here in comment four you see the italicized text. Yeah, isn't that the statute definition? Or no. no. Okay. No, that would be the um, replacement text for B. Okay. Um, and it would just be impact fees may only be assessed for public capital facilities for which an assessment methodology has been adopted by the planning board and or board, board of selectmen. I did the and or just because methodology wise needed to double check, but it's actually the planning board it's all in 1309 and that answer was already there so, so it should just be the planning board oh wait the no board it is both <coughs> hold yeah, on because we sent it to the planning board. you send it to the selectmen yep. the planning board should schedule a hearing after providing um, proper public notice for the re review of the fee schedules the board of selectmen shall act on the planning board's recommendations so you make a recommendation to the selectmen the selectmen adopt so, so then both should be mentioned in the in B yes. because both are involved. Okay. If I'm replacing it with the italics paragraph. Let's okay, I'll, yeah. I'll tweak that though to better reflect. But the gist of it. Process in 1309. Yep. So if it mirrors that, but the <coughs> gist of it being more general terms as long as the methodology is substantiated. And there is an example of why you can't take Lebanon's language and drop it on Litchfield. Because here your procedure is set so that it's the selectman that adopts. There it's the planning board. So. And have we always been there since 1990? That's the planning board selectman together? Is that? My guess. I believe Probably. so. I don't know. <coughs> Frank was here, yeah. he would know that. He, was, on a, know he that. was a selectman since 90. <laughs> All right. I think it's good having two sets of eyes looking at a situation too and not just having the planning board decide it. So. Yeah. All right. Moving on to C. An interesting little paragraph. It's not much to adjust there. I mean. Yeah, that's in there okay <laughs> you can adjust if you want no <laughs> i see enough red already <laughs> so 
D is now Ed. So is D E and D now, or are you? No, it was. Um, so what's there as B? Yep. Is new. Uh, the, okay. What's there as C? Yep. Used to be B. Okay. It's just word that decides how to renumber things. So this is going to be D. So this would, yeah, this paragraph would have been C, and it's now D. Okay. Um, and there's a note for it. There's comment five. Um, that per, on the next page that pertains to all of what is now D. <laughs> so we don't need it. Yes. He likes to delete, huh? He does. Well, if you look <laughs> at the Lebanon ordinance, it's yeah. about half the length. I mean, it's really short. Um, the longer it is, the more of a chance of it being confusing. Absolutely. Yes. It's just, it's just defining phrases. The word person includes an individual, a corporation, a partnership. Yeah. Are these definitions kind of in the statute anyway? Um, if we're referring back to the state statute, I mean, I assume they define. Most of it looks like it's already in there, so. Yeah, most of the definitions are already here. We, we have just a few edits. Um, so. In section D? Cause, cause, yeah, because it goes back to the... Uh, uh, okay. So, yep. so you mentioned why only applicable to this article and not the entire zoning, zoning ordinance. ordinance? Yes. Okay. So this is like this is generic language that whoever the consult in my guess. My interpretation. They charge by the page. It, you, <laughs> 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 um, oh. My guess is this, this is generic language that whoever was the consultant thought was important that be included in a zoning ordinance um, in terms of, you know, how do you interpret the ordinance? Uh, and saw that you didn't include these provisions, <laughs> so said, well, I'm going to at least make it sure it's there and included within the product that I'm providing for the town. Okay. And so plunked it in there. Um, Mr. Mayberry's point is, why is this only applicable to the impact fees and not the entire ordinance if you're going to have such language like this? Um, and I think his thing was more, the, this is really common sense. You know, things like the phrase used for includes arranged for, designed for, maintained for, or occupied for. Just like little things of, of how you interpret individual phrases. They must have edited this sometime in the uh, the late 90s. <laughs> oh. yeah, to put the definition of is in, in there so you know what is is. Is that a content comment? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we, is this referenced anywhere else and anything else in the town or is this the only spot that, only spot. I get rid of it. I, it gets redundant. I mean you've got what does and or either or mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Seriously and means and. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't mastered an either or or an and statement we are way ahead of the curve though by defining a, a person to include a corporation or a partnership or an incorporated association <laughs> is that in here as well yeah yeah there you go okay i'd say get rid of that then CIP in here yet? Hmm. I didn't miss that. Um, there isn't. Um, we can. Yeah, comment uh, six says add definition of CIP. Is that a generic definition through the entire state government? Probably. Yeah, I'm trying to remember why we added that. So we defined the word and, but we didn't define the word CIP. <laughs> the abbreviation. <laughs> There's two ways to look at it. If you are in this trade, you know what that is, but until a couple months ago, I didn't know what it was. Okay. So if you're a taxpayer reading this, you should probably define what it means. Okay. Um, just because it saves a question at town meeting too. Yeah. Okay. Is there a generic definition that you could pull or 
I'll find one. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, there's probably something in statute we can use. Yeah. Okay. I'd, yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, the more we can lift from, from state statute, the easier it is. Right. So 1301.04 is literally copy-pasted from statute. Um, what I'm thinking now is it'd probably be good to reference that language that I lifted. Yeah. Per RSA. Per RSA. Yeah, exactly. Um, per... And also, should the RSA ever change? Okay, I was going to say that. If the RSA does change, does it automatically go to the new RSA language if you reference it or if you lift it? They don't it? change the numbers. No, no, no. If, oh. R, if that RSA <laughs> number, oh. if the language in the RSA changed, does and it counter, it goes, oh. like, does it follow that automatically? Like, do, does the RSA trump this? Good question. Um, and how often does the RSA content change? That's actually a good question. We're running a situation with that with what happened with recon. Oh, okay. Where the, where the process of trying to get an RSA change because of language in it. Oh. Yep. But I would assume, I don't know, wait. If it references Let me throw it. that out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would think that. I would think. It would stay the same. The that's language fine, in your you... ordinance is the language in your ordinance, but. And that's if, what's approved by the voter. Right, so. but if you put a piece in there that says, you know, an impact fee per RS, RSA 674-21, et cetera, um, is a fee or assessment imposed, da, 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 then if there were ever a change to the statutory language, it wouldn't necessarily be, it's not going to automatically be adopted into your ordinance. You'd have to revise it through town meeting. But you could then say, you know, if you're working, you know, with your applicant or you're working within the, this framework, say, okay, well, that's the, how the statute changed. The statute trumps my language. Um, therefore, I'll defer to the statute until I can get it updated. But you'd have to, you'd be stuck in a gray limbo area that you would definitely want to place a call to, to council and say, um, okay, it, you know, it would, it would depend on what change. Can you define this, the RSA and say per RSA, blah, 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 from 2014, bam. And that way, if the RSA beyond I 2014. I wouldn't include the year. But then um, you're locked into the, but then you, it holds true to the, the meaning of when that RSA existed. Right, but when the RSA changes, the RSA changes. Yeah, it's not like the previous is version is gone. Um, so by not, so. so maybe we shouldn't even mention the RSA then. Right. So if you're right. going to put in that limbo area. No, I would definitely reference it. Um, so here's here's the limbo area. Here's some like examples. Um, Say all of a sudden, I'm going to throw random hypotheticals out there. Legislature suddenly decided that no, you cannot, and you cannot collect impact fees for sanitary sewers. So they struck that out of there. What I would say to you as the town is, even though you include it in your ordinance as something that you can collect an impact fee for, I would stop. I would not collect them because it's been unenabled by statute. So if it's court challenged, right. you yeah. lose. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, the opposite, legislature may suddenly say, we think that towns should be able to collect impact fees for gazebos. Now I'm being really ludicrous. Um, but We have one already. Yes, you have one. Um, so, <laughs> exactly. So, just because the statute now says you can collect impact fees for gazebos, um, I would say to the town, I would not start collecting impact fees for gazebos just because the statute says you can until you put it past the voters. Because now you're broadening the scope of what you might collect an impact fee for. So for that, I'd say, too. wait, take it to a town meeting, put it to the voters, and see if they support that. And that would be an amendment of the ordinance? Exactly. So, you know, those are your two, those are your two kind of extreme examples. You'd either lose the ability to collect an impact fee for something or you'd gain the ability to collect an impact fee for something. If you lose it, you simply just stop until then, uh, until you amend the ordinance. Um, if you gain, you simply yeah. don't start. You don't have to do it just because you're allowed to. Exactly. 
So I think you lose nothing from being caught in that limbo of a statutory change. And if this statute does change, do we get, I assume you get, you would know about it? General. To tell us? Okay. We'll try and keep track. All right. Yeah. I just didn't know if I was supposed to go somewhere and <laughs> add to my list. No. Um, in okay. fact, you know, that'd be a good handy thing. I don't know that last year we did a summary of things that changed. So. Yeah, that'd be a good thing once a year just to. We can, we can make sure we put that on the, let's, let's make that something that we do this summer. Because okay. the legislature will be done June, May. Yeah. Um, everything should be signed by the end of June. Okay. So maybe uh, sometime end of June, end of July, we do a... Legislative update. Yeah, a legislative update. We can very easily do that. It's just a planning board workshop item. Okay. In so, the meantime, I can send you links to where you can find legislative updates from the last couple of years if you want them. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go back to, oh. <laughs> um, I, I agree, then reference the RSA, whatever that number is, okay. wherever you pull, we pulled it from. Do we want to at all, or do we want to just hyperlink to the RSA? You know, like impact fee, see RSA 670. If someone has a paper copy of this, though, or. I'd list it out. This is one area where Mr. Mayberry actually suggested. Going long. Expanding it. Expanding, yeah. So there's nothing, well, he can't argue the RSA, so I guess he's, <laughs> as it's written is as it's written, because it's exactly how it's in law. Copy, okay. paste. <laughs> well, that one's easy. Any other comments on 04? Nope. You need to go to 03, though. Oh. You got a big mar uh, comment. There's a big comment. Seven. Oh. There's a whole debate that was going in the in the comments and notes on this tiny little definition. <coughs> you've got the you've got included here gross living area, but then immediately the definition calls the gross living area the effective area. So gross living area, effective area, net floor area, and gross floor area are terms that all have specific definitions. Your gross living area is not your effective area. Um, so, so gross, so, effect gross living area, like a basement, unfinished basement? So I would even say that gross living area is a mix-up of terms because when you talk about the gross air, let's, let's put the word living, air, living aside. So if you take for a building the gross area of the building, it's all of the space under the roof. Your footprint times your number of floors. Exactly. Your footprint times your number of floors regardless of whether it's habitable or not. So gross and living don't go together. Um, if you wanted to get at your habitable area, the actual kind of building universe term is your net floor area. Um, and that's the area within your gross area that's, that you live in. Um, so you deduct out your stairwell and you deduct out your basement and you deduct out your closets. Um, it's your habitable space. So where are we defining effective area then? Effective area is an assessing terminology. So um, your effective area is not determined until after your building is built, occupied, and the assessor's been out and, and conducted its assessment that's when your effective area is determined. So in terms of procedurally when an impact fee would be assessed. It's before that point. It's before that point. So we're contradicting ourselves. Right. Okay. So the, the idea was is you need something that comes back to when in that process 
would you assess that impact fee? And it's likely gonna be the point when Kevin sees those plans and issues that certificate, certificate of occupancy. Um, and so in that case, you want to look at either a gross floor area or a net floor area. So I gave you both. My guess is, is based on the way it's defined here, you're really looking at your habitable space. Therefore, your net floor area opposed to your gross. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more fair. Area. Yeah, net, the net would fit it better. It's, it's defining net now. So if you took the word effective out of there, yeah. is it fine? It mentions assessed values. It mentions habitable space that's heated. No, you don't want to do it as indicated in the assessment files. But you want, yes, you want includes finished space that is heated but excludes heated garages and outbuildings. Um, or in the margin, I gave you a couple definitions. The definition here for net floor area, it's a, that's a really generic definition that applies to um, residential and non-residential structures. That's why I think is the best fit for what we're trying to accomplish. So interior vehicular parking is a fancy word of a garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if it's habitable, it has to have heat, right? So they. Yeah. So that's yeah. So you recommend the net floor area definition as yeah. written in the yeah. in the yeah. Um, margin? Yeah. Like you said, like said. Nope, that's good. So that'd be striking all of 03 with yeah. net floor area definition? Yeah. Okay. Things would have to get reordered to, not too badly, to be in alphabetical order. But the whole gross living area gross definition living becomes floor. net floor net area. Floor area. Okay. You good with zero three? Yeah. Zero four, we already did. We uh, define the RSA. Zero five mm -hmm. defines new development. here in the margins. So about the Lebanon definition, it's more the what you put in and not necessarily the bedrooms. Well, it says living space to existing dwelling unit that increases the number of bedrooms. So we're taking out the number of bedrooms part of it if we go with what Lebanon has. Yes, yeah, so this gets back to... Like, why would you reference bedrooms? Huh? Why would you reference bedrooms? So this was a whole debate that we had when we were trying to do this. I missed all the fun. Two years ago. Yes, you did. This was a like, an hour <laughs> debate, I think, yes. if I remember <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> on what are, we what are we collecting the impact fee on and what's creating the impact. Is it the space? Is it the number of bedrooms? Is it the size of the house? It's, what if someone does a renovation and expands our house? Um, how do we capture the expansion? Um, so one of the things that the board was talking about was that it's your number of bedrooms that's directly correlated to the number of children that you create and thus impact on schools. Um, so that's what I the comp to that debate. There's, oh. <laughs> there's a lot of people today go out and buy a four bedroom house and have no kids. That's true. So how does that impact schools, right? That's how today is. Yep. A yeah. lot of people are really focused on their careers and not so much kids. So. 
But if you look at Mr. Mayberry's data, you see that there are definitely more kids per household in the houses with more bedrooms. Of more recent vintage. Of more recent vintage, correct. Um, so, but I think the point here, though, is we need to think back to what the guidance was that you gave Mr. Mayberry on how you wanted to structure that um, impact fee for residential structures and it was based on the square footage of the structure as opposed to the number of bedrooms or anything else yeah. um, in which case it isn't really applicable um, and so the question would simply be is it the creation or the creation expansion of a dwelling unit Lebanon is based on creation, creation um, or an increase in the number of dwelling units. So if you were to take, um, for example, a larger home and say, you know what, I'm going to split it in half and create two apartments in my one, what was a single family home, then the incremental addition of a dwelling unit would be subject. So it's an additional bedroom in a current house, a dwelling unit? The so bedroom you, is not the dwelling unit. The dwelling so if you add another bedroom to a house to expand your house, you wouldn't be hit with more impact fees because you added one bedroom. The dwelling unit's a standalone. Right. Dwelling. Right. So if you build a brand new house, you're hit with the number of bedrooms you have, but if you build a house and add bedrooms to it, you're not. No, no, it's, Is the, that, it's the, floor, the net floor area. So then why do we reference bedrooms then if we're going to do the... Because that's what the board, two years ago, that's what the board... Oh, right. that figured. was the direction so that contradicts. where your right. children come from right. for the school. If you increase a bedroom, you have more... Another child. So we're contradicting the other sections of this then? Contradicting your methodology you just dis yeah. you talked yeah. about. So we have to adjust this. Yeah, I did. The alternative looks fits in there a lot better, I think. Yeah, the only question I have is it just it doesn't capture expansions. Um, and so is that something that should be captured? In the beginning, we didn't want that expansions no. okay. way back in the beginning. Yeah. When we say expansions, do you mean expansions of bedrooms or adding yeah, a honking living room? Like you have a 40 by 40 living kind room. Of addition to the house. Okay. Wasn't there? Yeah, I don't really think uh, you should pay impact fees on adding a garage or a, liver, or a living room to yeah, your house, C even though it's the inevitable. The additional square footage. Of non-residential. So if we take the Lebanon definition, that's basically just saying if you add a dwelling unit, it's not carbon expansion zone. Right, so it'd just yeah. be the addition of a dwelling unit. You know, honestly, that makes a, sense. But that's yeah. the purpose of an yeah. impact. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's something new. Right, I agree. Okay. So. Good job, Lebanon. All right, so we'll take the Lebanon. Um, for both A and B. I would say yes. Yeah. He is very similar yes. Yes. in yes, yes, concept. Yes. So use the alternative language. Yep. Keeps the symbol. I'm looking forward to making the next round of revisions. <laughs> looking forward to seeing far fewer. Well, how are you going to fit it? <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's the upside the of it. <laughs> seen, right? Yeah. Right. yeah, that's the upside of it. Fortunately, the track changes are just going to keep getting worse at this point. So. Just turn it off when you're viewing it. 
So C and D, we're fine with the way it is. That's a non-residential section. Yeah. yeah. For E, I don't know if this is just the definition of an and, but you have one, two, and three. Shouldn't it be one, two, or three? Because. Ah, oh, this gets at our defining and and or. Because no one's going to be all three of those things. <laughs> I can understand a natural disaster, placement of I don't know. The way you read it, you seem like you have to qualify for one, two, and three in order to be exempt from it. Right. Or it should be one, two, or three. If one of the three things happens to you, the chances of all three happening to you are pretty good. You got, you got no luck or uh, Yeah, it's a bad day. <laughs> That's a bad day. <laughs> so I would just personally just put an or instead of an and just and it's semantics, but okay. all right. Well we closed out on O five. I think so. Okay. So zero six public capital. So comment ten and eleven. These are um, residual comments from your conversation on this ages ago. Aren't facilities and equipment always assets, though? Does an asset mean? anything of value so it doesn't the word asset automatically cover facilities and equipment yeah. if it's not a value then it wouldn't be an asset because i think if you have the word equipment then you got to define it you know yeah you're defining okay. it you're making it too specific at some point you reach the end of the amortization of that equipment and it's no longer a, a traceable asset but it's still something that you want to but Keep still, yeah, it depends how you define asset, though, because yeah, define it by tax terms or you define it by functionality. Yeah. Oh, I see in comment 11. How yeah. are capital? So just to give you a, a comparison, Lebanon's is six pages with giant font with lots of extra space for what public capital facilities are the, yeah their whole definite their whole ordinance from <laughs> with big font <laughs> i like big font probably read it from there um <laughs> they do not have a definition of public capital facilities they have off-site improvements, public open space, and public recreation facilities. But they do have a definition of a school district, which means the Lebanon School District. Is that odd you want to have public capital facilities? Isn't that the whole reason why you have these to begin with is for public well, capital? Well, I think part right. of it, though, is if you look at the definition of impact fee, which they, again, also literally cite verbatim from the statute it has essentially a definition within it's a you know a definition within the definition um, same as what you have there um, it's, it's a fee in order to help meet the needs occasioned by uh, that development for the construction or improvement of capital facilities owned or operated by the municipality, including and limited to, and then it goes on to list what they all are. I guess my only question would be, why did Mr. Delete not delete this paragraph? Did Mr. Mayberry feel that this was something that was necessary? Because the comments are from you, right? Not from him? I or tried these? to just fold his comments. Okay. So, um... Did he seem to think that it was something we should keep a definition of? Let's see. Let me here. 
go to his specific comments. Um, he didn't really have much to say other than some of the edits that I Was the equipment edited from him? So all he said, oh, this keeps going on to the next page. Um, he just said, re relative to the definition of public capital facilities to the first sentence after the town of Litchfield add or the Litchfield School District. In the second sentence of the paragraph, delete the phrase or with facility replacement, which do not increase the capacity or level of service. So he jumped over the word equipment. Right, so I didn't even make that edited change. Yeah, he didn't touch the assets, facilities, and equipment. He did not touch that. But he did recommend, sorry, and I didn't catch this, delete the phrase, or with facility replacements, which do not increase the capacity or, uh, or level of service. He suggests deleting. So your comment of equipment being broad, just to start with the first sentence, are you saying we should not be broad? That's a comment that the board had. From two years ago? Two years ago. Um, you have to cut the word facilities. I think assets and facilities basically covers everything that an impact fee would touch. Because all the schools are facilities. Right. And their assets. Yeah. Let me. Town buildings, same way. Any equipment could be an asset. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of if there are some instances um, where you might generally refer to something as equipment. Like a skid steer for the transfer station. <laughs> oh, it's like okay. a giant. The workhorse. Yeah. That works. Like a giant shovel. Big truck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, the snow plows would be under that. That's equipment, yeah. That's right. Equipment. What do you mean it's so generic enough that, uh, don't yell at me, but anything is owned and operated by the town of Litchfield? Or was that just too general? Maybe too general. Okay. Let me do a little research on that. I'm just leery of the word equipment. So did he add in or is defined in the CIP or is that no. there already? That was, that's a good question. How are they defined in the CIP? I need to grab the old CIP to see if there is. That's something that's on the. It's on the website. Yeah. But it's also on the agenda to be redone this year, correct? It is, yeah. And there's a separate committee that's supposed to be working on that? Yeah. I believe the selectmen are uh, out in front of that already. All right. So just be something that we'd want to coordinate. Yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> All right, so let's just leave that as a placeholder. Yep. Comment bubble as a reminder.
So we leave in the rest of 006 as a for next time? To get clarification of the whole paragraph? Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming 07, by adding Litchfield School District in 06, there's no need for 07. Was that his comment, basically? Correct. That it's redundant? Yep. So if we were going to be consistent through this whole document, then I think we should delete 07? Yeah. Yes, I would say so. Because it flows with everything else we've done? Loading leftover comment here. Asking what is an incremental impact? Yeah, where did that come from? I don't remember. I just had this little thing written down on the margins from the conversation. It's no longer an issue or a question. It points to an empty spot. It does, because I didn't have it in reference to any specific <laughs> piece of the ordinance. It was, I think, just a kind of a side conversation. I guess we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, this is to the vesting statute. Thirteen oh two oh a. Do we still have to have those dates in there? That was a long time ago. And does it cover schools? If we delete B, does A cover schools though? Just because we're one fee schedule, but you list out public um. library, public recreation. Uh, I think municipal office, public safety. So you define all those, but you don't define the schools in there. It was. Um, no, it was. The difference or the distinction between A and B is what would re require an impact fee to be triggered. So only um, new dwelling units would pose an impact to um, school facilities. Uh, someone building a new store would not pose an impact on schools. Therefore, an impact fee would not be applicable. So it's, it's setting a different definition or trigger of what would impose okay. an impact fee. So we're not getting rid of B, we're firming up B. Um, so B still keeping B in there. B is being pulled from section 1400. Okay, that's what's... Okay. Yeah.
Um, me and Barry's comments here specifically. It's just a terminology. Okay. Um, So, regarding the vesting piece, um, Mr. Mayberry notes um, under paragraphs A and B, uh, there is reference to vesting under RSA 67439. Note that the statute at 67439 Roman 2 contains specific language that is applicable with respect to the vesting period affecting impact fees specifically. So if you go and read that statutory language, it says that an applicant is vested from um, subsequent changes in sub subdivision site plan or zoning, et cetera, except impact fees. Um, so my read is that they are not, like the vesting does not apply to <coughs> impact fees. Hmm. They can still be collected from it. So, the, you know, the question is, is, when would that happen, it, you know? I think it, it's an unlikely situation that you'd have an applicant that would come in. Or should you firm it up just in case it does happen, though? And how would you? Well, you can't. You can't contradict statute. Like a work in here. know that I would even address vesting. Yeah. Oh, Lebanon, where are you and what did you write? <laughs> Is this one section where we may want to get further clarification before we decide anything? We can. Just like the other one? I can do a little more research. As Russ said, do we need to keep the dates in there consistently? We're not having the dates in there because we're referring to. Or is that just a housekeeping issue? Yeah, my guess is the dates were set in there based on when the ordinance was initially adopted. Um, and so there was probably a clarification that of when the, it started or went into effect. Yeah. So if you applied before the specified date, then. So it's irrelevant now because. It was 23 years, four years ago. <laughs> yeah. I would say just strike the date because if anything, it makes you think you have to go back and find something that occurred on that date, which we probably don't have any records of that, besides the initial ordinance being written. Yeah, if you could just get more information on investing. I don't think we're in a position to decide how that's going to be done tonight. Yeah, that's not good. No. All
Right. Letter C, you just strikes public capital facilities. Is that mm -hmm. just for continuity of the document? That's fine. And D, is this your comment to move it somewhere else, or is that Mr. Mayberry, the escalation? Um, that'd be Mayberry, I believe. Okay. Do you agree that it doesn't? Definitely, I flagged it when it was his, though. <laughs> Rather than take credit. Yeah, that was his. Did, um, did he give an idea as, as to where to move it to? My guess is right. it'd be part of. Um, uh, where do you have? I think you have a section that already establishes. You've got uh, the subsection on thirteen oh nine. That's the cost escalator piece. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it didn't make sense to have it here because you've already got the piece on in 1309 that is specifically about how you would apply that, that cost escalation factor. So would it be moving it to that section or deleting it altogether because we already defined it somewhere else? Because he's saying to move it. Um, but you're saying it's redundant. I'm saying some of it may be redundant, and so in the process of moving it, um, Section 1309 might need to get reworked to make it flow and and. Yep. We're probably not going to get to 1309 tonight, so could you move it to 1309 for the next meeting, and then we could adjust the whole paragraph? Sounds good. Okay. When you do get to 1309, there's a comment in there about this. Mm -hmm. Saying insert here. <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I did too long ago. Oh yeah. That's right. He recommends booting all of it. <laughs> the <laughs> Deal with section. it in the methodology. Which is suggested this whole document now, isn't it? To make the methodology the the map. The methodology being the map for how a fee is set and what is Okay, so giving the spoiler, the concern is that just using a direct cost escalation factor, um, isn't accurate because the way the essentially the way the math is done to determine the base methodology is fact is a component of both the demand based on a, a projected population or a projected need but also the cost per unit to construct and so if you're using the cost escalation piece you're only adjusting the materials cost you're not adjusting the projected demand um, so you may be over inflating or or not inflating enough um, so his recommendation is that the cost ex escalation be part of the methodology because it's tied to how the fee is calculated in the first place um, so that if a town were to increase or decrease it should look at and do a, a rough update of the methodology itself plus the new materials cost that that's that's the, uh, the framework for everything so yeah change it from the top down it's a lot more work than we've been doing previously mm -hmm. a lot more work to change it that way well because you're going through the entire methodology at that point instead of just going and applying a, a cost escalator okay. to the material costs right that's how Mayberry gets follow on business. Right. And also, though, in terms of, yes, uh, understandably, but on the other hand, once you have a methodology set, if we have the math that, you know, his spreadsheet and the math that he used, we can easily then say, okay, well, we know that th there are certain numbers or factors that you can adjust, um, essentially your projected population or, or whatever that piece that's creating demand um, is then that you can easily update a couple numbers and the rest of it would then auto calculate having those spreadsheets. Um, so that's it's not really that, that 
huge in the end. But yeah, it is a little bit more work. But it would yield a more accurate uh, number. Yes, it would be more defensible. Yeah. It would be more defensible that it is proportionate. Um, and so with, I wish I should remember the name of the court case off the top of my head. I'm not remembering it. Court case from this past, Lebanon? just a, a year ago. No, no, no. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> um, federal court case that made it to the Supreme Court, um, but it was getting at offsite exactions. Um, and so there is greater kind of scrutiny on impact fees and any other offsite exactions that come along with a, a development application. And there you've got to have the same kind of nexus and rough proportionality um, to create to demand those exactions that you would have for someone to to claim hardship so it's it um so there's there's a little bit and so i think that's part of the reason why he's promoting the more defensible methodology for updating um, the the cost of the schedules. So we do in the cost to slide into 130201, would that go back to the methodology then? Like when you it says computation of impact fee. So is that whole section referring to the methodology? Yeah. Yeah. So again he's he's noting that this section is more administration of the impact fee rather than computation is what he's saying here. He's, I think he's saying that the title is wrong. Is wrong. But if it's administration of it, it should belong there where right. it is because that's not the methodology. Right. He's just recommending okay. retitling this. I agree because otherwise it should be, if it's computation, it should be in the methodology to be consistent. Right. So let's just, so. yeah, we can retitle. Yep, that's fine. And then A, it goes back to the same issues we had before of you don't want to overdefine it. Right. And to be consistent in the document, you should follow the same path we did already. Yes. So do we want to strike one through five with something else written in A? So what he's saying here is again this kind of gets back to um, what we talked about we're looking at the definitions in the first portion of this is he's saying don't say in stat in your ordinance which types of facilities you're going to collect impact fees for go through the process of doing the methodology and determining what's defensible and then collect your impact fee but that's where that new definition that we pulled from statute that includes yeah. the laundry list of what you may collect an impact fee comes into play. Yeah. And so then it's incumbent, you know, so then the voters say, yes, planning board, please evaluate this laundry list of facility types and, and determine what is defensible and where there is a need in our community and put forward a proposal. Um, so then then you would go and say, okay, well, we're only going to collect impact fees for these three facility types or these five facility types. Um, and then you have you go through that methodology. So that, yes, so he's essentially saying strike one through five. Well, then in A, don't we need to reference the RSA for the definition of impact fee? That and or the definition that you have. Um, I would just here. slide the definition in there. So we're deleting one through five, deleting public capital facilities, and including the definition of what an impact fee is. Okay. In A. Right. Are you titling it? Yeah. You okay with that? Yep. All right. Yeah, and changing the title to mm -hmm. administration.
why is 1309 yellow? Is that, were we supposed to look that up to make sure that's right? For the last half of A? Um, hold on. It, you have, it's yellow? Mine's yellow, unless my screen's yellow. No, mine's highlighted. Yeah, it's yellow. All right, yeah, yours is in yellow. Yeah. Mine's not yellow. No, mine's red. Yeah. No, the thirteen oh nine. Go down. Oh, section thirteen oh nine is yellow. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, no, the last part a, of A. After number five. Go right down. After the public school, after number five, mine's highlighted thirteen oh nine. No, huh. that's fine. I'm not crazy. You. <laughs> He's working on the chairman's copy. We're working on the members' copy. <laughs> it's yellow. <laughs> I don't know what the chairman's copy is. But <laughs> okay. So then the rest of that is fine because that's just referencing um, keeping the second part. The, the impact fee schedule should be established and reviewed as set forth in section 1309. Right. Which is what we have currently. Even with the changes, right? That's where everything is. Yeah. Review and establish of fees amended March 93, March 2000. Yeah, the amendment date, that's just when the ordinance was amended. Okay. That section was. Um, for B, I would actually recommend um, making that a little bit more generic um, so that it would just be something, uh, you know, referencing any, any impact fees for the public road system this is just um yeah, it's trip just generation. It's citing the trip yeah. yeah it's citing the trip generation model um that should be utilized you know what again why do you need that specific i though? don't think you need this because this yeah. is in the this is part of that methodology and you don't i don't think you need to dictate a standard source Especially if the methodology is doing something different with it. And where that standard uh, the source... The methodology is always going to come back to the IT, the IT trip generation manual. Um, the only Does it, is trip, generation? trip generation data there is. Yeah. Um, so I know. So, it's, so is that mentioned specifically in the methodology, or is that just generically because of the purpose of it? I think it is mentioned in the methodology. I know that's what he uses for the basis. Yeah, so I say we don't even need the... So. Agree. That's redundant. It, yeah, it, it seems redundant. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have this down at two pages, pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> five fonts, one page. What do they have? They got six. <laughs> they got six in, so in let's big get it print. To five. <laughs> <laughs> Over the new model. Well, with your micro print, you might get it to yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume if we strike B when Mr. Mayberry does a final read through, if he says legally there's some reason why we shouldn't strike B, yeah, he'll. Yeah, and you yeah. also will send it to council before okay. we do anything with it. Okay. There's nothing proposed in C, D, or E. You actually have two Bs. So, so that one actually stays as B. That C. Right along. Are we all okay with the rest of 1301? Yeah. Yeah. Or 13, I'm sorry. Yep, 1302, I'm sorry. 130201. We're going on 130202, payment of fees. It looks good to me. B is and they are paid before the certificate of occupancy. That's how we do it now. Um, I think you mentioned that before. Well, it has to be. Cause this is how it's yeah. working um, now. So. This is relocated, I believe. Hold on. 130202, the phase of the fee payer. Um,
E come from? <laughs> I think it's relocated from somewhere else. I, I recall we or I added that. it in. No, it wasn't in the old version. It is new. I would just say a letter of credit drawn on the Hampshire Bank. So that's basically saying that the bank is is uh, guaranteeing the money for the impact fee. Mm. And why have New Hampshire Bank if a guy is, has a bank in Massachusetts, he can't do a letter of credit? Harder to reach. Oh, true. We don't want to send Joan out of state to, <laughs> to do our dirty work. Road trip. Yeah, that was in the last year, uh, two years ago. Huh? That was in there two years ago. It was? Yep. 150202, payment of fees. It was just the A, there was no B. Right. It's on page five. Yeah, it was just, just payment of fees. It was just the two yeah. lines. Yep. So well, I'm well, looking through it going, where did I get the B and why did I add this here? Yeah, I guess. Why would you want a letter of credit? Why don't you just mandate that the fee be paid? Oh, 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 oh. I see it. It's down below in 130203C1. I guess my bigger question is why are we even doing that? The letter of credit. Why not just make the fee is due to get your certificate of occupancy? I agree. Pay it. <laughs> I mean, a letter of credit just opens up more work from the town to collect the money at a future date. So why don't I just say the money's owed or you don't get your certificate? Um, I can look into it. I mean, where it's something that you're currently providing as an option. Maybe if you could find out when that was added in. Has that been that way for since 91? Or is that, if there's any history on when it was added in and why it was added in? I don't know. That pair, um, so if you look down further, the piece that's all appeals of planning board decisions I am Becky's shall go to the uh, Hillsborough County Superior Court. That was adopted in 93 after everything. So the letter of credit may be original language. It may be some tool that a developer uses as part of the financing package to do a subdivision. Has anyone used it before? No.
So if I find out that you don't have to allow for that, do you want me to delete it? Yeah, if it's unused and not required, uh, I don't see much point to carrying yeah. it as an option. Where if a developer does decide to um, exercise that option, we may not be prepared to handle it because we wouldn't have a, a familiarity with how to handle it. Especially where it hasn't been used. I just get nervous a letter of credit and in anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why take the chance? So 130202, if we strike B and the change made already in A, everyone's fine with both of those? Yep. Yep. All right. Appeals. Not much. Not much in A. Nope. B. C. We have a C strike it from there too because. Right, it's just, oh, in this instance, moved. it's moved. Yeah, but we're going to delete it in the other spot. Right, and yep. um, if we don't need it, it will not, it'll completely disappear yes. from 13.02.02. Which is um, what And we you'll want. just see the strike out here yep. in 13.02.03. Um, yep. This boy. And then the only other change in C was just public capital facilities, which obviously be consistent. We're striking that. So I think 13.02.02 is, 03, I'm sorry, is good. Mm -hmm. Everyone? Okay. 13.03.00. Yeah. Zero, zero. What's the difference between special revenue fund and restricted fund? Is there a reason why restricted was put in there? For, um, the impact fee accounts? Um. It's an accounting question that we may want to bring to maybe the town administrator. So this is, this is, um. And whose red line is that? Or? This is both Mr. Mayberry and Jason's. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayberry suggested further review of the use of the term special rev revenue fund account. Um, I have had comments in the past that the special revenue fund has particular meaning in New Hampshire under other statutory provisions on municipal budget that may conflict with impact fee applications if so classified. And Jason then also added and said, correct, don't use special revenue. <coughs> okay to refer to a restricted fund or funds separate from the general fund. I think restricted yeah. fund is just easier to follow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so that fine. was that was a double affirmative on a, on the uh, recommended change there. Two thumbs up. Yep. So. And I'd say they both know what they're talking about, so I think we should agree. Concurrence from the board. Yeah, that's why I made the change, and I didn't make a bubble in the con. <laughs> in the <laughs> that's not a discussion <laughs> item. All right. So thirteen oh one oh one. Thirteen oh three oh one. So it's 130301, uh, maintenance of fund accounts. Uh, the five guy. That's a good question. Are they five different categories or uh, five different accounts or is it one restricted account with tags for five different sub accounts? Which I think the only person who would know that would be it. So um, a question to bring Jason home. Jason. Yeah. Okay. What would you recommend, Jen? Are you are you better off um, having one general account? So so actually, kind of pulling it back to um, Mr. Mayberry's general comments. I marked over here in my markup that I actually made the note, but I'm not seeing the note. 
Um, he had said that, um, you know, as previously mentioned, the current ordinance limits the categories for which fees may be assessed in Litchfield. There's nothing wrong with such a limit, though any additional fee category would need to be approved at town meeting as an ordinance amended before the planning board could implement it. If retained, the list of specific impact fee accounts should include the categories of uh, municipal office facilities uh, and public safety facilities because we had incorrect terminology that I've fixed. Um, blah, 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 blah. So if, so the thing is, is if you keep those specific five categories, then he recommended keeping the specific five categories here. Um, otherwise, um, I think it, it may separate, maybe more, let's just follow up with Jason and say, can we just simply say separate accounts? Or is it one impact fee account total or is it separate impact, separate accounts per type of impact fee? So are we keeping the five types of impact fees then? You struck it earlier. Yeah. So, so we're, we're not gonna, so I'd say so this, mute. We're not this should get, five. yeah, this should yeah. get reworked. Yeah. And I need to decide, I need to find out from Jason whether, it, or it, J, Jason, Joan, or anyone here, um, whether they maintain separate accounts per fee type or one, just one separate restricted. Okay. I have a question on JC24. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, maintain current address on file. So if it's paid to the town, doesn't the town have that? But why is it, yeah. is it redundant to have the payer or is that the better way to do it? No, because the construction company paid the impact fees mm -hmm. and then they changed their address. They have to notify the town. Oh, so okay. They can get the money back. So we don't have that word currently that way. It has to be, you know, so they can repay yep. it. Okay. And that's something that bothers me. Why do we repay it to the construction company that put it up originally? That, not, it bothers me too. And not repay no, it to no, we don't. We don't. Record is. And that's one of the things that would, that's further down. Are we sure? Because I was giving. 1305. We, we, we pay it to whoever paid it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right, but Why I'm saying if the, if the construction company paid it, and then sold the and, house. And sold the house. That they cost included built in. in the cost of the house. Right. So now the homeowner's paying it. Right. Right. But you don't know that, so right. you're not paying it back to the contractor. Right. Whoever paid it. Right. 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 So spoiler alert. That's part of the conversation yeah. for 1305. Good. Right. Thanks. Uh, you ruined everything tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all depends on how far you want to go on this because it's now. Are we past the halfway point? I think you're past the halfway Maybe point. Maybe will be the end. Uh, this is um, six out of eleven. So you want to try to finish thirteen oh four? We haven't even started thirteen oh four. Oh, I'm sorry. For thirteen. Uh, just do thirteen oh three. Yep. Thirteen oh three oh one. Okay. I mean, it's Let's pretty. Draw the line here. Snap the line here and move on. Next meeting. All right, so just for me to clarify, though, you want me to go through, make all the revisions that we've talked about tonight so that the next meeting we're looking at updated copy, updated copy so that those pieces like 1309 that has some spoiler, yep. you know, that had some spoiler alerts tonight um, has the revised version 
And if it's reflecting discussed. back to what we've done already, it should reflect what's accurate. Yeah. So in 130301, are we keeping the payer needs to maintain, are we defining that more? Okay. So. Because we already did the, A, we did already. We need to find out how the accounting for it. So 130301 is really focused on collecting the fees and the record keeping. Um, and not who they go back to. We keep in mind, it says, and shall maintain an updated record of the current ownership and tax map reference numbers for properties for which fees have been paid. So that's getting at the... Who owns the obligation now? Yeah, the, the spoiler alerts for 1305. In which case, this comment on 24, that's an old comment or to kind of carry it forward from our past conversation. My markups here. So C reflects 1305? Yes. So should we wait for C until we discuss 1305 and go back to it? Because if it is tied together, As written here, C seems to make sense to me. Yeah. Did you want to put something in specifically about maintaining the current address on file, the payer or the comment you put in? Um, okay, so the, this is... Or is 05 take care of it? Well, hold on. So the, the comment 24 was just a flag to say, listen, and, and payer may not be the right term. Um, so the, this was reflecting the conversation that the board had previously that it's incumbent upon whoever the current owner is or the payer or whoever that fee belongs to, um, it's incumbent upon them to make sure that their records are up to date um, as opposed to the town having to run around and track and chase and figure out who it is, what the address is, that said, it's usually already in the assessing data if you're going with the current owner. So, so it shouldn't okay. be an issue. So I would say C is fine the way it is. Um, I think the concern was that by having the term and shall maintain an updated record, that it's now the burden is on the property owner or no the, the, the burdens on the town to maintain that record as opposed to the property owner oh oh yeah so let me let me look at that and see about that particular phrase there's a better way to state that and who's got the workload obligation. That's the main concern. Let's fly there. So in D, we're adding Jason to that? Um, Makes sense that they do it together because yeah. they're both involved with it anyway. Okay. I guess back when this was originally written, we didn't have a town administrator. Yep. So it makes sense to fold him into the mix. 
Are you suggesting we define report as um, the town report showing fee and interest? Yeah, I mean, that's something that you make it more specify. More specific. Or, yeah, we can make it more specific. I think it's a good idea since it is money. You should know where it's allocated to. Mm -hmm. Make sure to include fee and interest accumulated for it. That should be important too. All right. And you said review with Jason and Linda transactions summarized by Jason, balanced by Treasurer. Was that agreed upon by the two of them as to how they do it? I yeah, I need to double check it. Okay. With them. No. Makes sense to me, but. I don't know if you want to get that specific. No. But well, they, they do their job. That's what they're hired for, so. Yeah. It's not even, that's his old notes. Okay. It's Karen. So we're going to table 130400. We'll start there next time. <clears throat> Snap a line here and yep. claim victory for the evening. <laughs> Moving forward. All right. Next on the agenda is the uh, is the uh, close-up memo for the agriculture overlay draft. I'm okay pushing that to the next meeting if you want to, since it's late. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Move that to the 15th. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Next on the agenda is the minutes from the March 18th meeting, which were extensive and very well written. <laughs> and if you did not read them up to this point, you cannot vote on them because okay. they're 20 pages long. So hopefully, yeah. I assume we all read them already. Yeah. Your Honor, the only thing I saw was in the last of the Secretary of Clerk. What page? Mike Proto, the ballot. The annual meeting. Where are you? The last page. Page 20. Under the offices, okay. you have secretary of clerk. Secretary to be slash clerk. Secretary. Yeah, secretary slash clerk in um, both places. Oh, two places, yeah. I got to say, Donnie did a very good job with the minutes, and maybe if there's a place for future meetings that we could keep these minutes there because they do a great synopsis of what he covered. So yeah. when we talk about impact fees next with him, yeah. link they'll link these on, minutes. So they'll be on that site. But you want to link them to someplace else? Maybe the next meeting agenda. Oh. Where we talk about it again, so that we have those with us, because it's a great way to do a quick reference. I, I oh. can, if you want, I can just add him a link as a PDF. To them yeah. As a P, yeah, as a PDF, or even just linking to this document on the impact fee page, so that it just stays yep. on that impact fee page. That it's a great searchable yeah. document. Meeting yeah. meeting. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, at the very top, I did catch something that I, I'm questioning: planning board public hearing. I thought it was just a regular meeting. Was it a hearing? Where are you? Right up at the very top, the title of, of the minutes. Oh, Planning Board Public. Oh, I probably just didn't change it. Oops. Yeah, public meeting. Good catch. That was all I caught. <laughs> you did a great job with these, Donna. Thank you. You can take the next week off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great reference material. Because it's, I mean, he gave so much information, so. Okay. I wonder if we should send him a copy. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And assuming we approve them at this meeting, we can send them the approved copy. Yeah, just for, ref for reference. Yeah. So I'll wait until you have the approved version to post the link. We have a motion for the minutes. We can a motion to approve the minutes from March 18th as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I need to abstain. 
Opposed? Opposed? The abstain yeah. passes 301. Any other business you want to bring up this evening? Um, I sent you this notice about this uh, water, drinking water source protection conference today. Sent it out. I have the agenda if anybody wants to look at it. There was one section that looked pretty interesting. New land conservation plan for the Merrimack watershed. Because the Merrimack watershed is supposed to be um, very impacted in the next 20 years. Oh, we sent Mike <laughs> <laughs> It's usually a really good conference, but it's usually yeah, during I've been to, I've been to one. a weekday, isn't it? It's Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. So it makes it tough for board members to get to. And I may be out of town that week. I might be interested. I've been to one before. I might be interested in going. But I have to make it in mind fast. They say it fills up fast. I'm sure it does. But it's okay. Hmm? It should be okay. And that's all I have. Yeah. Oh, I have um, changes came to the disc for 2014 changes. So should I pick them up in a PDF to put them on my computer? You've got Word files and PDF files on there. W what's better to put on the computer? On the website? No, the PDF. computer. On the computer? On my computer. On your own personal computer? Yeah. Whichever version you want. What's the difference? <laughs> PDF Nothing. you can't change. One you can edit, the other you can't. So do you want a copy? Do you want this on your laptop or do you Is that the want 2014 It's in your handbook? Dropbox. The 2013, I thought it was the 13 one. You just updated it today. 14. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, did you put it on the site? I, no, it's not on the Google site. I keep, a, for myself, a Dropbox folder so I can have it on my iPad. So it's like cloud storage. Um, You're way over my head. I, know, so yeah. <laughs> I was moving. So, yeah. um, so Mike said, wait, you, you have can, a, the can you floor. share the folder? So I shared the folder with him. Well, so I moved stuff around and I was. you have a folder and you want me to share that folder with you i can or we they're usually on the town they're on the towns all of the towns website well that usually takes a while so <laughs> right uh, the town website it's a pdf correct. Yeah, correct okay if you um i was worried dropbox i moved stuff around and i didn't know if i touch things does that go back to you yes oh shoot Ooh. sorry see so you obliterated all of them <laughs> no no i didn't know i didn't yeah, I went, Poof. <laughs> are they all still there i put them all back <laughs> oh sorry that's okay all right. Some mental note. I checked. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So if we're shared, yes. we're real time to each other. Yes. Okay. I didn't know that. Yes. Now I do. So if you delete one. I would put it in my hard drive. I just move stuff around just so I wouldn't have to be online. If you drag and drop from Dropbox to your hard drive, it re it literally takes them from your Dropbox and puts them on your hard drive yeah, and it yeah. removes them from the Dropbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I had we'll to update them anyways because I had yeah, done the updates. That's one of the so advantages of okay. using Dropbox. Yeah. But, but you could copy it though, right? I could right click, copy yes. the file, or download it from Dropbox to you. Yes. You can't just drag it because I dragged it as an icon, which is why it went poof. Okay. All right. It was gone. <laughs> and, like, and I was trying to remember how many docs were in there. I'm like, oh. I opened the folder to overwrite the zoning ordinance with the updates, and they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, no. I won't do that again, I promise. It's okay. <laughs> hey, you want to pass that disc? I'll uh, copy off what I want off of it. There you go. Yeah, I had, I no. copied and I went back to try and get the zoning and I, the disc wasn't working. Oh, right, or something. John, I'll, I'll grab it from you someday. To Let's just take a minute. And how long would it take to go on the website? Yeah. It would be on the website eventually? Months. Eventually, okay. yeah. Oh, the bylaws were missing from the website too, so we need to give them the updated zoning plus the bylaws. And, and the bylaws that are on yes, the, the the bylaws are on the CD. Ooh, there's a lot on this disc. It's everything. Ooh, copy all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you do that, you'll get both versions, PDF and the Word. Yeah, version. that's fine. I've got plenty of space. Maybe I should go back. It's only the zoning there. ordinance that's kind of hefty. And that's the one I didn't get. I went back to get it, and this, the CD was acting really weird. <laughs> I oh. tried to open it and close it. 
Anything else? The uh, New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning has announced their um, 20th annual Spring Planning and Zoning Conference. It will be held on Saturday, May 3rd at the Mountain View Grand Resort in Whitefield, New Hampshire. I'll go if I can stay over. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend, but when I have attended in the past, I found this to be a very valuable experience. Yeah, it yeah, it's Last year's was very informative. Yeah. It's very worth going, and the Mountain View Grand is absolutely gorgeous. So if anyone from the board intends to go, please uh, fill us all in on what you've learned you after you get you back. Couldn't go, you couldn't get there for 8.30, so you'd have to stay over. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think they have discounted rates if you request. As many years office. as I've been up there, I've never found that place. Yeah, that's all I've got. I'll take a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 400. Our next meeting will be April 15th. Good night.